Now, Tim Taylor, Denise DeCenzo, Casey Coleman on sports, and Dick Goddard with weather. This is News Center 8. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Here's what's happening. On a day the Earth shook here in northern Ohio, the nation paid tribute to seven astronauts who roared into the history books aboard the space shuttle Challenger. Ironically, just minutes before the start of memorial services, a rare earthquake measuring five on the Richter scale rumbled across the north coast and far beyond, from Illinois to Washington, D.C., and from Michigan to West Virginia. With the quake center near Chardon, some of the heaviest damage occurred in Mentor. Madison High School and the Perry Nuclear Power Plant had to be evacuated. We come together today to mourn the loss of seven brave Americans. To those they left behind, the mothers, the fathers, the husbands and wives, brothers and sisters, yes, and especially the children. America mourned its seven heroes today, just yards from the last link to Challenger, Mission Control in Houston. And in Akron they gathered to remember Dr. Judy Resnick, the astronaut, the pride of Northeast Ohio. We have a series of reports on both events tonight, beginning with Martin Savage standing by in the newsroom with a wrap-up of the day the North Coast was on the move. Marty. Where were you when the ground shook? It is a question which was repeated around Northeast Ohio many times today. Just before noon, an earthquake rippled through the area, creating a rare sensation for millions of people. There's no official dollar figure, but damage estimates could easily run into the millions of dollars. The building was just shaking and it had us all very frightened. The earthquake measured 5.0 on the Richter scale and was centered about 30 miles east of Cleveland in Geauga County near Chardon. Nearby Menor was one of the area's hardest hit as the 30-second rumbling did damage to many buildings. Most of Menor schools were evacuated and part of the roof collapsed at the junior high. Several students had to be attended to when they fainted. At one supermarket, the quake left a mess in its path and its doors closed and locked. I don't know whether it's safe to, safe to go in or not. In Madison, the quake ended school early for 1,300 high school students. The tremor did structure damage in the form of crack walls. It, too, will have to be inspected before reopening. After the earthquake, there were at least two reports of minor injuries, including a five-year-old girl who was hit by a broken window on the Lake Erie College campus. It shook bad. I thought the building, everybody thought the building was going to fall down. You know, it was shaking so bad. And all of a sudden, people are running down the hallway. Oh, my God, oh, my God, did you feel that? The quake caused downtown buildings to swing and sway and created anxious moments for office workers. But there were no reports of damage. The most dramatic measure of the tremor could be seen on seismic equipment at John Carroll University. The delicate instruments jumped off the scale. But even though a 5.0 reading is considered strong, experts don't anticipate aftershocks. We have been looking at our records here, and we have not seen any aftershock activity at all. Now, the earthquake also triggered an on-site emergency at the Perry Nuclear Power Plant, which was located not far from the epicenter. 1,500 first shift construction workers were sent home after the quake and investigation found hairline cracks in a rad waste building and an intermediate building. But it's not clear if the tremor is to blame. A spokesman says there was no damage to the reactor and no danger of a radiation leak. All in all, the day the Earth move will be remembered, but one thing you have to remember about insurance is that if your home is damaged, your homeowner's insurance policy does not cover such things. In most cases, you need a separate earthquake policy, but covered or not, experts suggest that you carefully go through your home and look for any signs of damage. But we are going to be talking about the shimmering and swaying here in this city for a long time to come. Tim? And Marty, the area's only earthquake monitoring station is located at John Carroll University. This morning, the seismographs began showing the Earth's crust shifting at about 10 a.m. And when the quake hit at 11.47, the tremor was so severe, the machines could not handle the reaction. There aren't any really active faults that we know of in this area, but we may have found one here. Hmm. We don't know. And Father Ott said that today's quake will go down in the history books as the strongest ever to hit the Cleveland area.
Still to come on News Center 8, what was the strongest quake in Ohio? Dick will have the answer. And we'll go to Akron in Houston for farewells to America's seven challenger heroes. Stay with us. A week of national mourning for the Challenger astronauts ended today in emotional memorial services in Houston and Akron. Judy Resnick was born and raised in Akron and her family still lives there. Today, as Akron correspondent Dick Russ reports, family, friends and hundreds more remembered the woman and the dream. They came from as far away as Houston and as close as her old West Akron neighborhood. Family, friends, and those who just wanted to be close to the memory of someone they didn't know personally, but admired because of her accomplishments and dreams. Her parents and family heard Judy Resnick eulogized as a woman who died trying to make one more of those dreams come true. We still praise the Lord for sharing this precious human being with us for sharing her with we who continue to benefit from her labor, and that labor was a labor of love. Thirteen fellow astronauts were there to say goodbye to a beloved friend and co-worker, including Sally Ride, the first American woman in space. As the congregation left Temple Israel following the service, close friends of Judy Resnick's from childhood said they knew they had to be there to honor her memory. She knew that the, the risks, I don't think she ever really thought there might be any, but she's where she wants to be. As a final gesture, there was a flyover by NASA jets, the kind in which Judy Resnick learned how to become an astronaut. A salute from her fellow space travelers, tears from her family, for a woman who long before she ever went into space, showed everyone she knew how to reach for the stars. Dick Russ, New Center 8, Akron.